Okay, hey, um, you guys saw in your notes that we had uh, some stuff about international capital flows when we were dealing with the foreign exchange market. When we first introduced that, we were talking about uh, exports and imports uh, and the importance there because the demand for dollars is foreign demand for U.S. goods and services. They don't want the dollars. They want the goods that they can buy with the dollars. And then we said the supply well, the supply of dollars, that's because U.S. citizens want to buy foreign goods and services. we add, we got to add another element here, though, and that is that sometimes it's not the goods and services that they want to buy, but it's financial assets or physical assets. And so that's where the capital flows come in. When a U.S. citizen wants to buy a foreign asset, for the United States, that's a capital outflow because what we have is there's a diversion of money out of the loanable funds market, money that would have been used for domestic investment spending, but that money has now gone out of the country, gone to some other country. So that's a U.S. capital outflow. Now, one of the little tricky little nuances here is that that money that leaves the country could be used for different purposes. For example, I could take some of my money out of the country and invest in, in a factory, build a factory in Indonesia. That, in particular, we call direct. That's foreign direct investment because I have invested. Remember, purchased capital. It's investment in that sense. So foreign direct investment. However, if I took some money and I decided to buy some stock in a Japanese company or to buy a German government bond, those are financial assets. Now, you, when we've talked about the loanable funds market, we've mentioned that those things are saving. Those are a saving behavior. But in this case, that money is leaving the country. So we're not really concerned about whether it's a saving behavior or an investing behavior. The direct foreign investments and invest, I'm sorry, is an investing behavior. When I buy those bonds and stocks, those foreign financial assets, it's a savings behavior. And the distinguishing uh, term is that that's foreign portfolio investment. Again, that's investment because I didn't buy a physical asset. I bought a financial asset. But in either case, there's money that has left the country. So both are U.S. capital outflows. A U.S. capital inflow that's when a foreign citizen buys a U.S. asset, whether it's a physical asset or a financial asset. If it's a physical asset, what is it? Yes, foreign direct investment. And if it's a financial asset, good, portfolio. That's portfolio. So that's just kind of give you a little bit. There's some stuff in the notes about that, but pay attention to that. What does that mean in terms of the or the uh, exchange, foreign exchange market? is that if there are changes in interest rates that motivate us to move some of our money between different countries, that we have capital outflows and capital inflows, that's going to affect our demand for currencies. So make sure you're thinking about that when you're doing the foreign exchange markets.